Uh, okay, let's go ahead and uh, you know how I like to do if you've been with me for a while, go ahead and open that participants tab for me. And we're gonna check engage your um, understanding or your activity with Flipgrid. So if you have used Flipgrid before, please go ahead and push the yes uh, little button. If you have not, go ahead and push no. Right on. Cool, okay, so we have a couple that have. Um, Mac, will you go ahead and unmute and give us your perspective about how Flipgrid has gone for you? Yeah, um, I, I've only used it like once or twice in AP Biology, but I really liked it because I had my kids do like a hands-on project and I wanted them to walk me through a certain biological process. And so instead of writing it out, like they kind of always do, I had them create a video where they had to move things and talk out their process. So my kids liked it. It was a lot easier than writing a paper and it was a lot quicker to grade and a lot more fun to watch versus reading papers. And awesome. I didn't even do that many papers, but it's a lot better. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, no, it's a different, different uh, modality of like expression. I've kind of been talking, if you've been following me uh, on my trainings the last few days, uh, you know, I keep talking about that idea and hitting that idea of like, Choice is going to be really, really important for our students. Uh, we're going to need to offer multiple different uh, modalities of expression, right? Can't just be writing all the time or worksheets all the time. And so Flipgrid, it, it offers a variety of things, uh, and we're going to show you those today. Um, and honestly, I think I, I, I kind of told everybody in the last session, but I have been thinking about how this could be integrated in every single one of our departments. And I hope that after today, you guys could start thinking and brainstorming about that. Uh, once again, I'll just front load with this. Flipgrid has their own like library of um, topics that have already been created by teachers that they have shared and are sharing freely. In addition to that, we'll look at it a little bit more, but there's like specific, um, I guess, what would you call like the Wonderopolis and stuff, Mel? Like how would you, they're like companies that have put out, I guess, topics or groups or things. We'll show you that, but um, you don't have to recreate the, the wheel is the point. I know that we are so eager to like jump in and take our lessons and like tailor suit them. But remember, you don't have to recreate the wheel. We're not going to have the time. We're going to be anxious. And so really, truly, we need to uh, draw upon the, um, you know, the resources that are out there already. So uh, before we get started, uh, let's just give me a big old thumbs up in your image so that I can see everybody that we're ready to rock. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, look at you with those reactions. Awesome. All right, welcome, Daniel. Uh, I'm going to put the slide deck one more time in the chat before we get going. If you have questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat. If I don't get to it because I'm in the middle of like, you know, going on a rant or whatever, uh, I you can go ahead and just unmute and be like, Ayo, slow down. I need to ask a question and I will not be offended by any means. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. So um, Flipgrid Basics, uh, we're just going to kind of jump in. Uh, there's a couple of uh, points I want to make before we kind of show the features of it. So in essence, like what is it? And essentially, it's a opportunity for us to post like discussion prompts. Um, and then the learners can get on and respond to those uh, discussion prompts by sharing short videos. In addition to that, it allows for uh, the learners in our classroom to also view their peers' videos and respond to their videos so they could have this ongoing discussion. Uh, in addition to that, the camera option provides you a whole plethora of choices. So it's not just I'm getting on, it's not just a webcam. It could be just a webcam, um, but there's options with boards uh, and emojis and things that allow you to kind of expand on just your typical like webcam like we see right here. So we'll get to this. Uh, the other reason why I think this is going to be so um, enticing to our students is because they're on Snapchat all the time, and this is not Snapchat, so if you hear that word and shut down, like, this isn't that. It's a much more protected platform, uh, but it does have those, when I say it's like Snapchat, it does have those filters and stickers and boards and frames that kids could add to their shorts or their videos to um, kind of dress them up a little bit and make them look fun. Uh, it will be a learning curve. You probably will have to teach your students how to do this, um, but we're all learning together. So maybe that's a good opportunity for us to uh, kind of, you know, um, guide them through it and uh, laugh at the mistakes and, and cry see in secret. I don't know. Okay, here we go. So Flipgrid's explicit mission is to empower every learner on the planet to share their voice 
uh, and respect the diverse voices of others. I talked about this in my last session. Um, so many young uh, kids today, I feel, and I, I'm seeing it all over social media, they feel like their voice is being squashed or they don't have a voice. They can't express who they are, what they believe, where they stand. Um, and it's up to us as educators to provide them that voice because if we don't, then we are just as bad as every other person that they're highlighting in their life that, that shuts them down. You know, I think back to when I was a kid and in high school and I felt the same exact way. I felt that people looked at me and were like, I don't know, you don't know what you're talking about. I feel that way with our district right now. And maybe you guys feel it too, right? Uh, we don't know what we ta we're talking about, even though we're in the classroom, we're engaging. And so what we can do with Flipgrid is it, it's an opportunity to provide that outlet for our students to have that voice. Um, and I think that there's something special. Um, there is always a place, let me back up. There's always a place for a written discussion post board like Schoology offers and that we can use throughout our courses. But there's also something special about seeing a face-to-face -face interaction, right? We're not gonna have that like person-to-person -person contact like the traditional classroom offers. And so being able to um, express ourselves in video, I think is the next best thing. Um, and I know they'll be Zooming with us, but this is another thing they can do when they're not in our course that can keep us connected. So you have to sign up for an educator account. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to flipgrid.com uh, flipgrid.com and up at the top you will see uh, that it says educator login where these four red arrows are pointing. Um, sorry that's weird on the eyes I know but I just wanted to draw your attention and this is a good lesson if you're um, you know if you're giving a lesson and you're using a slide deck and you're presenting on do zoom and sharing your screen using elements like these um, active arrows allows you, the students eyes to be drawn to it so I want you to look right here you would click educator uh, login. From there, you would, it's a single sign in option. So all you have to do is sign in with your Google account, right? And you automatically create a, um, a, your, your, your account. And the cool thing is, is then you never have to remember the password or the login because the Google account's there. So you're good to go. Um, if you're like me, I have like 15 different passwords and half the time I forget them. So, and then this is just a view of like what you're gonna see when you log in, this is your educator dashboard. Um, and so, uh, one more time, flipgrid.com. Uh, I've, I've made it uh, linked right here. So in the slide deck, if you wanted to, if you have it open and you just want to click right here, uh, one more reminder. Remember when your cursor is a, like an arrow like this, it means it's a not clickable area, but as soon as you hover over something and it turns into the hand, that, mean it, that means it's clickable, right? So if you're the one of the people that's like, uh, just find the little hand. And then when you click it, it'll take you to the educator login area. It's right up at the top. All right, I'm gonna stop for just a second. Give me a thumbs up if you are tracking with me. All right, cool, thanks so much. Here we go. So once you're in the educator uh, dashboard, you're gonna go ahead and create a topic. So a Flipgrid topic is the equivalent of a discussion prompt, essentially. Uh, you can pose a question, you can have them like express ideas, uh, talk about experiments, there could be debates, really anything you want. Um, so for my speech class, I was thinking about this a little bit and I thought, you know, it might be intimidating at first to get up on the Zoom with all of the other, my other, the other peers, right? And, and give a speech. Uh, via Zoom. It's a weird thing because you have to remember to look into the camera, right, and, and all that stuff. So what I can do to start or what I plan to do to start is rather than making it just like a public forum for speeches, I'm going to go ahead and have them record their speeches using Flipgrid and then send those to me and then I can give feedback and then they can adjust and fix and then they can go ahead and maybe that could be like the pre um, speech delivery and then after we refine it, they can come on here and do it to their peers without uh, with a little bit more confidence because it was done in private. You can moderate all of the videos so that all of the students in your course or the ones that are interacting see it, or you can, you know, you can you can preview it beforehand just to make sure no kids are being silly uh, or inappropriate. Um, and if you want to learn about the moderation settings, this is a one more time. Look at, we go from an arrow, we hover, and now we have a hand. So we know this is a clickable link. Not to mention, I said click here. When you click here, you're going to see a blog post and it goes through step by step about how to turn on moderation. Um, and so remember, educator login, create topic. That's your first step. The next step is after you create a topic, you have to really think about as you're designing it, 
how do you want to like, who do you want to be able to access it? And how do you plan on sharing it with others? Um, and so there's a couple things you get to decide who has access to the um, actual topic. And uh, you can put, you know, the school domain email. So if you only want kids to be able to log in with the vusd.us email, uh, you can put that in there. So anybody externally who tries to get on and do a video for whatever reason, uh, it will not allow them because that domain's not in there. So you just, another little extra security tip. Um, you could do a guest password, it's optional, but if you want a guest to be able to jump on, you can provide them a password and then they can get on and they can participate even without the vusd.us email domain that you've established there. And then when it comes to sharing, right, um, once the topic's ready, you know, you, you have to give it out to your students and that's done either through a uh, URL, which is a, what this looks like, or you can give a QR code down at the bottom. You can embed it. This is a really great feature for us specifically because the way that Schoology works, you can embed uh, items into Schoology and then it lives within our learning management system. So the embed code is always a great uh, feature to have. Uh, we don't use Microsoft for that. So this icon down here at the bottom of my screen on the left third, the third of my left side is the, for Microsoft Teams. This green and yellow one is for Google Classroom. Right, Mel? Okay. And then uh, if you use Remind, which I do, and many of us on our campus do, you can just push it out via Remind um, and they can access it that way. Uh, they can access or anybody can access uh, Flipgrid from the computer. So like a browser, um, simply by getting that join code and going to their, it'll take them to their website to log in. Uh, there is an iPhone app, so it works with Apple. And there's also an Android app. So it works with um, Android, Android Life, right? Mm -hmm. So um, they can download the app and there's uh, some features in the app that I um, didn't go over, didn't plan to go over. Um, but a couple different features. Mel, do you want to talk on maybe the couple features that are in the apps that aren't in the browser? The, the differences between the two? Sure. So like the main extra thing that you can do with your phone app is that you can add like GIFs in there. So like animated little pictures there, which is really cool. Whereas in the desktop, you can't. And in the app, if you have a pretty recent phone, like you can, there's a bit more power when you edit your stuff. So you can like split the clip and like make it shorter and that sort of thing. Whereas like in the desktop, you can only like trim depending on your, de like depends on what's going on there. But like it's, that's the editing thing is a little bit more limited. That's, that's it. Cool. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah. So everybody loves gifts. You know, I do. Um, and so to have that app and then it's at their fingertips, right? So they can just get on if they need to respond to, um, the Flipgrid, you know, post, they don't have to log into their computer at any point in time. They can just be on their phone, which they're on it anyways, all the time. So it works out. Um, meet them where they are. Right. Uh, I just have to say, Ross, I know you're not there, but like every time I look at your picture and you're smiling so big, it like makes my heart so happy. Can you go back to the picture? I prefer that. I'm just Rude. kidding. <laughs> I was eating. Oh, thanks. That's okay. No, you're good. Uh, all right. So that is, uh, but Larry, seriously, guys, everybody take a moment. Go ahead and give him a clap. Look at that picture. That's like the best staff picture I've ever seen. Hey, there's a clap reaction. Okay. Are there any questions thus far? I mean, it's as simple as that for the most part, guys. There's some d design elements that I'm going to walk you through in a second, but ultimately, uh, it's as simple as that. You create an account, you set the act, you create the topic set the access, share it, and um, these are all the different ways in which we can, uh, which they can access it. Uh, so any questions thus far before I continue? Oh, there's Mika with her nonverbal cues again. Uh, last, uh, the last session, Mika was always giving me a no when there's no question and everybody's just staring at me. And then the next time I asked a question, everybody was like, oh, she wants us to not like say no. So everybody's face went like this. Um, well, like, you know, like Rudy knows when we're talking to the softball girls and you tell them something and they're like, you're like, all right. So I was just always taught to say yes or no. And so I was looking at me. No, I appreciate that. Cause honestly, guys, I think that's something that we don't really think about in a virtual classroom, right? Like they're going to, we're going to have to teach them how to interact across a camera. And so it's important for us to use these sessions and these experiences um, to 
to see what it would be like to get feedback or to um, figure out how to move forward and all that because we can't read their nonverbal communication. Because if I was reading your nonverbal communication right now, all of you are pissed off at me. And I know that's not the case. I know that isn't, but you're all like this. Listening intently, right? Because I keep talking like a million miles a minute and you're trying to like stay up to me. I get it. All right, here we go, continuing on. So here is a slide that gives you some insight as to how to use this in the classroom. Um, so it could be a bunch of things. Uh, you can do quote analysis. I've seen uh, for English classes, or even if you're doing like a foreign language class, thanks Rooney, a foreign language class uh, where you read literature, you can have them pull a quote and include that in, and then you can have them kind of talk about why they chose that quote. Um, you can have them do for PE, they can like record themselves doing jumping jacks. <laughs> I don't know what PE does. We didn't, we didn't really do anything in high school. We just kind of ran and walked. Um, if it's for music, you can have them do like a digital concert. So they, so like, you know, uh, Jordan and Yakota, they could uh, have their kids play their instrument and then send it in and then they can give insight into that. Um, and it's a way to do it without like disrupting the whole class period because we only get a certain amount of time synchronously, right? With our kids on Zoom. And so if you're having every single kid play their trumpet part, that's gonna be a lot of like just sitting and watching people play trumpet parts, which is gonna neglect all the rest of the instruments uh, that are in the class, right? And so by flipping it and having them send it in on Flipgrid, uh, then maybe Jordan could bring those in and he can display them or he can create something called a mix tile, mix tape. It's called a mix tape where he can like save them and put them together. Yeah, uh, flipping with Flipgrid, that's right. Uh, they can do commercials, announcements, um, all sorts of things. I'm going to use this for parents. So one of the things that I think is going to be really, really important this year is for us to get parents involved uh, a little bit more than maybe they were in the past because we have no, um, we don't have the capability of like seeing our kids every day. So if a kid doesn't show up to Zoom multiple times in a week uh, and we only see those kids twice a week, that's going to become a problem if it's you know, absences multiple times over the course of a month. And so I'm gonna plan on being super close contact with parents. Early on, I'm gonna try to send a, a flip um, topic out to my parents in my class using their emails from um, PowerSchool. And I'm just gonna ask them to say like, what, what is your expectation of me or how can I help best serve your student um, this year, right? Because they know their kids, they know how their kids learn. And so engaging them that way uh, kind of, establishes that relationship early on and allows for the buy-in on both parts and so we it becomes a, a you know collaborative process versus they're at home kids are at home we're at home um, you can do open house this way you can do all sorts of things uh, as a staff i could see us celebrating right we could uh we could spend time celebrating each other and and um or you know kind of talking about here's who we are this is what we're about um, we could do goal setting uh, i've seen calvin was in here he's not here right now but i've seen uh ones hi calvin welcome um <laughs> hi uh i've seen people do like school yearbooks video yearbook type elements there so it's it's substitute plans like if you wanted to like leave uh like a video with a substitute to be able to um you know run your class you could do that so there's a lot of options i'll let you look through those um so i'm going to jump into the features but before i do everybody uh point to your left now everybody point to your right. Now everybody clap your hands twice. All right, just making sure you're with me still. So we're gonna continue on and uh, we're gonna start by looking at shorts. So the shorts is essentially, it's the camera that's integrated inside Flipgrid, all right? And you can uh, create your video there. Uh, like Mel talked about earlier, you can trim, uh, you can rearrange, like adding in um, you know, different clips or whatever. You could also, if you created a video elsewhere, you can upload from your computer to Flipgrid um, and it can, it can live in the Flipgrid area too. So it doesn't mean you have to do it right then and there, you can upload it. I was trying to do a Flipgrid and I, it was messing up and like right at the end, I had spent all this time on it and I was freaking out because I was like, dang it, like I figured out how to do the stickers and I was moving through and I couldn't find it. And thank God I pushed like download and so it lived on my computer. So I was able to just upload it again and it wasn't lost and gone forever, which was good. Uh, there is a whiteboard mode for those of you guys that are curious, if you wanted to like explain something as you go, there is a whiteboard mode. 
Um, and I'm not super familiar with the live linking to add context. Um, Mel, can you speak to that at all or? Okay, she can't either. So uh, I'll look into that and figure out what that is, but you can overlay photos from your camera. Uh, you can do emojis, stickers, text, and I'll show you all of those. And then there's the filters and frames, which are like my favorite thing. So how do you do this, right? How do you create a short? So you're gonna log into that educator admin dashboard that I showed you earlier. At the top, you're gonna navigate to where it says shorts. All right, it's gonna be at the very top, excuse me. And then you're gonna click record a short. And then you'll have uh, the link that you can embed or share to your uh, to Schoology. Um, here's another way you could use it by sending personal messages to family, friends, and colleagues. Um, so you know you can print a unique QR code that you could send to them, uh, and then or just screen recording. It allows you to screen record as well, so you can screen record with your students. Uh, this right here, this link, I'm not going to click it because it's long, um, but it was me last night at like two in the morning going through like all the different um, elements and features of the camera. Yeah, so I'm not going to play it, but you can watch it later if you want to see me be like, okay, so here's the things. Uh, these are quickly, I'm just, before I show you in real time what it looks like, these are the filters. There's all of these different filters that you could um, use. Uh, I like this one because you can't really see it. Although after the fact, it I went like I was going like this with my thumb up, but now that I look at it, it might like be like this. So it's really how I was feeling last night. I don't know. Um, there are all these different text types that you can add to your short. Look at me, rep and remind. I'm a true, true mind fiend. Okay, uh, these are the frames. These are pretty cool. So like, if like kids were doing like for. Um, you know, the news or whatever, or like a visual blog or for Ranger TV, uh, they could put this breaking news filter on, on the bottom. You can also kind of create, it's, it's a whole other complex thing, but you can create images and upload them from your camera. And so if you wanted to create your own customized bar on the bottom and upload, upload that as a, as a picture, you potentially could do that as well. Um, so yeah, these are all the, the frames. Gotcha. Um, and then there's a bunch of boards. So um, the boards are going to go in front of your face. Um, so you can use this. You can't really see it in this image, but it's a dot grid. Um, they have a graph paper, just a straight up whiteboard. Um, you can use a notebook, so you can't really see it, but these are lines. A blackboard, chalkboard. Of course, rainbow is my favorite. I love the rainbows. Um, so those are kind of the features that you're going to see in the camera. And I'm going to show you in just a second. Um, but I do want to go over uh, uh, some of the other pieces here. So Discovery Library is going to be <laughs> where you're saving grace. Um, so what is it? It is essentially, a, uh, it, it's a location in Flipgrid's uh, platform. There's over 25,000 different um, community generated topics. So you could take those topics and you can just take them and add them to your own like uh, discussion areas and they become your topics that you can then push out to kids. So once again, I mentioned not recreating the wheel. This is how you don't recreate the wheel. Um, and I'll go into detail on that when we get to the website. Immersive reader. So this is beneficial for students who uh, maybe have uh, dyslexia or English language learners or struggling readers um, or those that just maybe need a little bit more assistance when reading. Um, it makes it essentially, there's all these different um, options. So if you put up a topic and um, you want, the t so the topics all have text. They uh, can click the immersive reader and it reads the text out loud. It can break the words into syllables. Uh, you can change the text size, font, um, how far they're spaced from each other. Uh, it provides line focus. So it'll like gray out every other area except the line that you want them to read and move down. It can highlight parts of speech. So nouns, adjectives, adverbs, verbs, etc. cetera. Um, and there's a picture dictionary. Uh, you can also change the language. So um, the picture dictionary is kind of cool for our struggling readers because if there's like an advanced um, word out there that they don't know, they can turn on the picture dictionary, click on the word, and it, most of the time we'll have an image that associates with the word. And since images are universal, that kind of helps our struggling readers um, understand the concepts that's being asked of them. And I'll show you that in real time as well. Or there's some videos I stole from Mel. She goes into it, so maybe she'll, we'll just show those. 
Uh, then there's Grid Pals, and I'm really excited about this because Grid Pals allow you to connect your students with people across the world. Um, so what you can do is you can search by your content area. There's a bunch of different content areas by your grade level and by your, I guess, your location. Uh, if you wanted to, you can zoom in on your location and it allows you to take your, your classroom. Um, Mel, you want to answer that in the chat for me? Um, it allows you to take your classroom and you can connect with a classroom across the world. And so you can pose a topic and then individuals from say like, I don't know, Columbia could get on if I had a topic, Mel's kids could get on and they can talk to my kids through the Flipgrid videos. So it brought, it makes the world just a little bit smaller and connects people globally, uh, which I think is really kind of cool. Uh, especially if like you're trying to uh, talk about like different cultures, you know, you guys could compare and then there can be a whole like video discussion that haps, happens on each of the different uh, entries from the learners. Oops. Uh, mixtapes is the next one. Mixtapes. Uh, I've never played with mixtapes, but my understanding is that um, <clears throat> all the responses that you get on your uh, discussions or your grids, uh, you can pick and choose and put them into like an, a playlist. So if I wanted to like take my speech kids responses for their like argumentative speech, um, or I wanted to pull like a sampling of like each of the speeches I, I choose the best from all across my my speeches that I've assigned. <clears throat> I could then put that into a mixtape and it acts as a playlist of all these shorts. Is that correct, Mel? With the mixtapes? Yes, yes. So I was distracted. I was looking at a massive reader. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Okay, uh, you can do talent shows, you can do read alouds, you can do all sorts of things. So uh, that's mixtapes. And then, um, let me just double check. I didn't mess up here. Yeah. All right. So these are a couple of videos. I'm not going to play them, but uh, they released a video getting started for educators. So that allows you to click there and it'll walk you through the steps of signing that up. Uh, there's also one for students. So I was telling um, Alyssa and Mackenzie and Nicole earlier, like my my plan when, when I first get into school is really just to get to know my kids. And I'm going to use Flipgrid for that. And I thought, you know, early on when we're doing the get to know you activities before we jump into the content, any new technology that I'm gonna be introducing to the kids, I'm gonna use it during that time so that I could troubleshoot and fix and so that kids feel confident using say Nearpod or Flipgrid early on in a low risk um, kind of setting or environment or lesson before they have to jump into using it for the actual curriculum in my course. And, but there is a video that kids could watch so that they understand how to navigate Flipgrid themselves. Um, okay, so any questions so far before we continue and I show you like the demo? Thanks Mika for nodding for me. Okay, Mika, everybody's like, no, no, no questions. Awesome. All right, I also have linked down here at the bottom, the Flipgrid blog. There's tons of resources on the blog. They are constantly posting. And so you can subscribe to that or you can just reference it um, and it can give you some insights. These are all those videos that I was talking about. Um, <laughs> that. Um, so she did a whole um, video on how to use the immersive reader. Uh, she had did a video on creating groups and topics, mixtapes, activities, uh, and then GridPal, and then Discovery Library, and then the shorts. So um, I asked her, and she said it was fine. I hope that it's still fine, but you can click on these and watch them um, and uh, see you know, if you want to know more information like later on if you're playing with it. One last thing before we get to the demo. This is a, um, a tweet that was recently put out. And if you want to go to Jess's uh, Twitter page, you would just click her, I have it linked. So you would just click her um, picture. Once again, notice arrow, hover. Oh, there's the hand. Now that's how I know it links. Every single one of these YouTube videos are linked as well if you just click on them. Um, so you can, there was a discussion of a panel of educators and they talked about social emotional learning in Flipgrid, storytelling in Flipgrid, diversity and inclusion and ways to implement Flip, Flipgrid in that and then first look, um, the new, because the new, because all these features just literally came out on Wednesday for the camera. So, uh, so you can look at that, and then there's a blog post down here that uh, references that as well.
Here is where you can access help if you need help. They have a ton of um, articles that you can reference. You just search for like what you're struggling with. These are, this is how you can find them on their social media. So they're really active on Flipgrid. If you right now are on Twitter and you went and tweeted and you uh, tagged them at Flipgrid, they would respond back most likely. So if you went and said, oh, I just had a um, Flipgrid training and you, you had at Flipgrid instead of just typing Flipgrid, they'd probably send it back and say, so glad you had a training. I'm excited to see what you do. Uh, and this is the kind of the hashtag that they like to use. And these are the people you can reach out to on social media if you wanna know more. They're all wonderful, wonderful human beings, especially this chick right here. She's a hoot, her name's Anne. <clears throat> so that's that. Any other questions for me before we continue? All right, well then let's play, shall we? I'm gonna have you guys do it first and then I'll go and show you a couple features. So. What I'm going to do is in the chat, I'm going to go ahead and put this um, URL. I'd like you to go ahead and paste it or click on it. And I want you to, I'm just going to step back for a second. I want you to click on it, maybe create your account at that moment. I know that normally we don't do this in the trainings that it's like, I usually am just giving materials and showing you stuff, but I want you guys to maybe get started on this. And this is a force. This is one app guys that I swear will change your classroom. And so, um, I'm going to have you click on that. I'm going to take a step back. If you have questions or something's not working, um, you go ahead and ask me. And we'll, once everybody's kind of, I'm going to give you about two or three minutes to get logged in and such, and maybe start recording your Flipgrid for that topic. And I'll start to see the responses kind of come in. Uh, you will not be on mute because you're going to be on your own computer. So I'll just sit here and watch all you guys navigate. It's a lot of fun. If you have questions, unmute and ask us. We'll go ahead and uh, answer them. Hey Shannon, I'm having trouble getting on it. Okay. Um, what what is the what is the issue you see? I should say introduce introduce yourself. That's all I see. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. In. And, I'm gonna go ahead and oh, that's right. You do you have to log in now? They would right with their Google account. I don't have an account. Okay, you should log in with Google. Okay. Usually, I just clicked on it, but I I ran straight in. It usually prompts you to create an account. I go went ahead and gave you a the ability to share your screen. Daniel, do you want to share your screen with us so we could see? Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. 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 There it is. Yeah, so go ahead and click where it says uh, record a response. And my topic is right there. It says, welcome to Flipgrid, tap the red button okay. and then go, yeah, join with Google and you're good to go. Okay, sounds good. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, thank you. No problem. So you want to mute again before you record yourself or we're all going to hear you. And I don't want you to be embarrassed. <laughs> A fun fact about me is I own 50 pairs of Toms. A fun fact about me is I I'm afraid of bees and I have what's called a bee run. People can attest to that, they've seen it. A fun fact about you, Calvin, is you could probably shave your beard off today and it would be the same tomorrow. And then mine won't like work. It keeps saying like that the camera won't work and it hit like retry camera and it says like pop, like click the allow pop-up, but okay. the pop-up's not coming up. Can I see your share? Can you share your screen with us so we can see? Sure. Did it work? I don't know. Uh uh. So at the right there, there you go. Yeah, you're in. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's see upper right next to, so in the URL bar, you see that camera next to that star? Mm -hmm. Click that for me. And then, um, okay, and then try to push done. And then retry. Hmm. So maybe Why you can you like open, it, open another window or something. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, so maybe. Um, Close it and try to open it again. Opening it in another window, perhaps. Um, so you have to go get that, um, the flip link. You can see me. That's weird. Hold on. You can see me being a <laughs> tech illiterate. You're fine. <laughs> it's all good. Rooney, any luck? Um, you guys are having the same issue. Yeah, Let's same see. thing. Uh, I was, I did what you were telling Ross, and I couldn't get it to work either. Yeah, it's still not working, even in a new browser. Mine is neither, but that's CTE. Shannon, I'm stuck again. Mice is frozen. There's nothing. <laughs> see, this is the beautiful thing. We use it now so that we, uh, you know, can do this and not have be embarrassed in front of our kids. Um, I'm going to guess a couple things are happening, guys. I'm guessing, going to guess maybe you haven't updated your browser in a while. Um, and so that could be a reason why um, everybody's using Chrome, right? Yeah. So it could be that. Uh, you could force quit the browser, like just kind of X out and then um, try it again. If you wanted to come back in, uh, to, I can bring you back in to <laughs> look at Calvin taking a selfie. I can have you come back into the um, Zoom if you need to do that. Okay, I, I had no luck. Wait a moment, something popped up. Uh. So I see Mika got one in, Kelly got one in, and in just a second, I'll show you guys what it looks like. No, you don't want to see it? Yeah, I can show it, okay. Did anybody use the cool features? Did anybody use the like filters or the frames or the stickers? Yeah, okay, okay, I see you. Honestly, these technical problems right now that people are having is probably a good thing, better now than next week. Yeah, because you can fix them. The other option, uh, Ross and Rooney and uh, Liz, is uh, completely shutting off your computer. I don't know how long it's been since you've turned your computer off and restarted it. Um, I would check your internet browser, make sure your internet browser is up to date. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I can show you how to do that real quick by sharing my screen. Would anybody like me to do that? Can you show me later? Yeah, I had, one person, I had one person nod, so I'm gonna go ahead. That wasn't you, so I'm gonna show. It's a very simple process. So when you're on your internet browser page, you go up to these three dots. People like to call it a snowman. I just like to call it three dots vertical. It's right here in the very corner. You click it, you go down to settings. You come down to about Chrome. And then you'll see right here whether it's up to date or not, or it'll say update. So one more time, three dots, settings, about Chrome, and then it checks for update. Traffic light, traffic light works too. All right, we're gonna go, I know not everybody's done it and you're still figuring it out and that's fine. Um, doesn't mean you can't do it can, you know, later on. I can send you the link and if you really want to play with it so you have a topic to do. Um, but I will, uh, I'm going to go ahead in just a few minutes or a minute or so, I'm going to go ahead and show you Mika and Kelly because they've already submitted theirs and we can see how they look. I can also show you a couple other videos as people have done like where they haven't shown their face and they've like done like a, I don't know, it's like a story with images.
Best story ever. Ever. This is that immersive reader. So as I'm still sharing my screen, if you're just chilling, uh, you click that blue, it's a Microsoft tool and Flipgrid's a Microsoft thing. So here's immersive reader. It takes whatever the prompt was and it opens it up nice and big. And then your options are over here. You could play it. Welcome to Flipgrid. Tap the red button below to open the Flipgrid camera. So you can do that. You can change it from um, female to male. Camera. Then record a short video. And you can uh, slow it down or speed it up. And waiting hand say hello. Star struck share a fun fact about yourself. Woman teacher. <laughs> so obviously that was really, really fast. This is going to be really, really slow. Woman teacher, medium light skin tone. What are you excited? So it describes the emojis. <laughs> I didn't know it did that. <laughs> oh, crap. That's funny. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's, that is, <laughs> that's it. And then over here, uh, these are your text preferences. So you could do text size, make it really, really big or small. Uh, you can increase the spacing, so spreading it out or not. Uh, you could change the font style, good old Comic Sans. Um, you can change um, the, the theme, so it changes the background. So for some people of visual impairment, that helps like them see a little bit better. Um, and then in, if you click this little like wand, you can break up the words into syllables. So welcome to Flipgrid. I, I would feel like Flipgrid would be too. What's up, Mel? Melissa, um, sorry, Adalia. Oh. <laughs> um, I was wondering two things. Uh, can they save the prior videos and then pick whichever one's their favorite? Of can they do multiple? And is there a way to do outtakes? You know no. What I mean? like, oh, messing yes. Up. No, you can. Um, no, you can download the video. So before you like push next. Um, you can download the video and then upload it again. I don't, there is not outtakes, right, Mel? Like you can, if what you mess up, like, sorry, if you mess up, like it, like you can't, um, like stop there, go back a little bit and start again. That's what you mean, Melissa, right? Yeah, like bloopers. Like the kids do the video and then their their dog runs in front of them and they want to save that part even though it's not part of the lesson oh. and show it at the very end, you know, stuff like that. No. Not, if, not if you've already pressed like next to go there. The only option there is just to trim it or delete that clip and you can go yeah. back. Like on your phone, I think maybe it's a bit more flexible because if you can trim it, I mean, like if you can split the clip and just remove that part, I mean, that's possible. If that's what, is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, um, and you can do these shorts. Um, so this is just responding to a topic, but you can create shorts on your own that live in your, like my shorts area. Um, and then you can <clears throat> upload those shorts to things. Um, but, uh, you can't really, it's not like an edit, a full on editing tool. You can trim and you can add like new recordings. I guess you could if you had a, re a recording of bloopers like on purpose, but you can't save those bloopers like specifically. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Um, you still have your hand raised or you did you get your question answered? Oh geez, no, that was it, sorry. Oh, I'm no, so you're good. bad at that. No, you're good. Um, so also you can highlight like nouns if you want them to like specifically you're working on language development you could highlight nouns verbs adjectives etc and then over here the little book this is where you can turn on line focus right um so it just reads one line at a time um you can make the line focus medium size or a little bit bigger uh the picture dictionary is already on and i'll show you what that looks like uh so you see how excited oh well I don't, I don't know what happened to the picture. We'll, we'll show you that in just a second. Oh, it's delayed. Um, so you can click on the word and like hear it. Some of the words that you click on might have like images, see video. Oh my gosh, a VHS, like kids even know what that is. Uh, here's like, first, I don't, it's not clicking right right now, but um, you can change the language here. So if I wanted to change it to say Spanish, um, I could do that. I'm going to turn off line reader. And so now it's in Spanish and you click on it. 
Bienvenido. And it translates. Welcome. Botón. Button. Abajo. Below. So you guys get the point, right? And you could do really any language at all. So uh, there's a ton of them. And uh, that's, so that's immersive reader. Uh, this shows that the topic is moderated. I need to make them approved. So right now you guys cannot see these videos if you clicked on this uh, topic because they're hidden, but I can make them, uh, sorry, active and then everybody could see them that would go on my board. Let's go ahead and look at Mika's. You guys ready for this? Hi, uh, my name is Mika, and usually most of the time I like taking pictures of myself, but I don't like the way I look. Uh -uh, so um, the, there you go. Yeah, you're in. Uh, <laughs> Shannon, when I was little, okay. your screen would break out. When I was little, okay. um, I had Bell's the palsy, right and so I feel so like when I'm in this type of camera, I can like really see it. So like and this side of my I'll face is so you. sad, <laughs> but this side is okay. okay um, and then try to push done. I don't remember what the other stuff was, but okay, I'm done. And then so there you go. So there is Mika's. Let's watch Kelly's. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm an English teacher at Redwood High School. And fun fact about me is I have three dogs, one of which we decided to adopt during all this quarantine madness. So it's been fun. Um, one thing I'm excited to learn about this year is new tech and how to incorporate it and kind of figure out how to revamp everything I've been doing for the past two years in the class, 10 years in the classroom. Have a great day. Oh, so sweet. So there you go. I did want to show you just uh, real quick. Um, I put on our um, Schoology page uh, this advice for new teachers. It was something I was trying to get going and only two of us have really responded to it. So if you get a chance, I'll go ahead and repost that or maybe I'll send it via email. My whole goal here is on Flipgrid, it'll give you good practice, is to take these videos and send them out to our new teachers in Visalia Unified and just kind of to give them an encouraging word in such a really hard time. I'm going to forward this on to Shelly and her induction team. So I wanted to show you what it may look like if you respond to something and you use all the features. Now this is the old camera, so there's no frames. So I'll show you mine. Hi there. So once upon a time, we were all new teachers, right? Um, and when we were new teachers, we got advice uh, and insight and encouragement. Um, and I'd like to do a little bit of the same for you. Uh, so just a little about me, just in case something sparks your interest and you want to connect. Um, my Twitter handle will be at the end of this little clip here and you can reach out. Uh, so I teach high school English, specifically AP language and composition, and I love it. I've taught all levels of English in high school, so if you ever have a question about that, you can reach out. Additionally, uh, I teach speech, so in terms of public speaking, I really love it. It's a passion of mine. Um, so if I could give you three pieces of advice today, here's what they would be. First, you have to invest in relationships and make connections, build connections. The reality is this, if you don't show the kids you care about them beyond just them being a butt in a chair, uh, they're never gonna bend over backwards, nor are they gonna try to strive for greater because there won't be a trust or vulnerability that exists within the classroom. So build those connections. I know you have content to get through, but honestly, um, getting to know your kids should be priority number one and the content will follow. You'll have time for that. Um, additionally, you really want to make connections uh, with colleagues at your school site and across the internet. Honestly, I have uh, developed. All right, so I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's three minutes and 29 seconds, but I just go through this, this piece where you can set it up and you can, as you click and move across like what you're saying, these little, um, your text boxes and things can pop up. And I plan on, uh, Calvin is, has a question, I'll get to you in just a second, but Calvin and I are gonna be uh, in a kind of a semi-official capacity, the tech coaches this year on campus. Um, and I foresee us leading some PDs uh, throughout the year. And one of the PDs that I will lead is how to do this kind of stuff on uh, Flipgrid. And so um, just, you know, Though you, you can do this too, it's not complicated, it just takes a little bit of prep work, so um, there's that. Uh, Calvin, question, thought, concern, Kelly? Yeah, no, I just had a question. I, I don't know if I did something wrong with the Flipgrid, because like I made my video, I took my selfie, and then at the end, because when you when you pulled it up and it showed just Kelly's and, and Mika's there, it didn't show, show mine, so I log in and it's showing mine 
like on my videos that I've made, but didn't get sent to you or something. It did. Oh, I it just did. needed to refresh it. So we're right here okay, now. Cool. So I can show cool. your guys's too, if you want. It looks like somebody's viewed it already. Um, you <laughs> probably, and I can make these active too. Okay, cool. No Kelly, worries. I was just wanting to make sure. That okay. I think that, that would answer my question. Cause my, um, so when Carson did this, you know, last year, all the videos were showing up as responses and I'm like refreshing it, refreshing it, not seeing them, but now you just made them active. So now right. they are. That's what yeah, that's so, I was wondering. I'm like, aren't we supposed to be able to see them? But so do yeah. you, is, is there a way that you can just set it to them automatically being active or do you have to go in and make them active every single time? Yeah, you can, you can just turn off the moderation. Um, I just have that safeguard on because it's like just kind of what I set it up as, but okay. you can make it to where you don't have to look at them all at all to before they get become active. Um, okay. and that's how I have like the, uh, advice to new teachers so that people can get on it and it's just automatically there. Okay. Mika and Ross, you both have your hands up. Um, I was just wondering if you could upload a video from like another location into Flipgrid and then send that out. You can. Like if yeah. So if it's saved on your phone. Or mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You absolutely can. Right. Yeah. Ross. Um, so I know this is gross, but I, I could got it to work in um, Internet Explorer. So it didn't work in Chrome. Though. Did you already say it had to be an Explorer or no? No, usually Chrome or Edge. I can't believe you got it to work in Internet Explorer. Actual Internet Explorer, not Edge. What? Wow. Yeah. Well, it said you should use Edge for the optimal experience. Um, but, Are you uh, on Edge or Internet Explorer? I was in Internet Explorer. I didn't click on the Edge. Ew. Um, I know that's why I said it was gross, but uh, like in 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 the Chrome, I was like I went in and like changed the settings and said allow camera, allow microphone, you know, allow pop ups and everything, and then it um, it finally would pop like put the pop up and I clicked allow and then it still didn't do it. So I don't know. I don't either. I would try shutting everything down after this and then restarting and then maybe going back and seeing if it um, if that would help. You know, it's just like okay, the cool. this unplugging and plugging it back in, <laughs> uh, yeah. and I'll do a little more research on my end. Uh, anybody else thoughts? Um, about like how to respond. So your kids will do the same thing. You'll set up these topics, you'll give them the codes um, and then they can respond. I just wanted to real quick before I let you go, we have about five minutes till that hour mark. Um, I want to show you discovery, which is the, um, <laughs> what did it used to be called Mel? Disco library. Yeah. Disco library, which is such a better name than discovery, but uh, and then you could do all sorts of topics. So somebody unmute right now and throw out a topic. I hear somebody unmuted. Who is it? What do you got for me, Kelly? Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, thank you. Edgar Allan Poe. Look at all these topics for Edgar Allan Poe. Let's see what this one is. So it says Edgar Allan Poe was an amazing writer and poet, but had a mysterious death. Check out these theories about the cause of Edgar Allan Poe's death. Which one do you agree with and why? Share your reasoning. And then right here it says YouTube. So it looks like this is a YouTube video that we could click we out We are and being watch. censored. Amer it's not about that. It's about writer, him as a mini bio uh, after that ad. But essentially that would be the response. So if you wanted to add that topic to your own um, collection, you would click add topic. And now the kids could go ahead and look at these theories about his death, read about them, and then they could respond to that prompt. It's pretty cool, right? Give me one more. Somebody else unmute and give me another one. Not all at once, y'all. Fingers in the air. Everybody put your finger up. Now slam it on your space bar. All right, who did it? Who was it? Ross, it was you. You're up. What's your topic? Um, brassicas. You want to spell that for me? B R A C C. Wait, no, S S I C A S. I don't know. I can't spell anymore since like March. How about Jurassic Park? Would that be better? Yeah, that works. Okay, it's like cool. broccoli. And so, stuff. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> broccoli. Um, so, this is a, you can upload a GIF here as your focus little pin. You guys saw that I had, um, I'm so tired. I can't think of his name right now. 
What's the painter guy's name, guys? Bob Ross. Thank you, Bob Ross. Um, explain how you worked through the challenges in this breakout. What was really difficult? So this looks like it uh, was con was is compared to a math like assignment that they just wanted to um, put together. Here's another one. Look at the image and write about the image. Inspect the image. Come up with six descriptive words or parts of the image. Then create a story in six sentences. So you can add this to your topic, and then um, they could go ahead and, and and verbally give it to you. Brassica. You know, I just don't think that brassica is going to show up. Uh, what about broccoli? Let's do that one. I don't ever spell this right. Did I spell it right? Try brassica. I just did. It didn't work. But dance patterns, soccer, what is scoliosis? So there's a lot of options. <laughs> this shows your <laughs> this shows your activity. So uh, when you start to create your Flipgrid, you can earn these little achievements, and then you can share these achievements on social media if you want. Um, these are all my recent activities. Uh, so that's that. Mixtapes, I don't have any, but this is where you would take like, and it would be like a playlist of the different videos that have been submitted. This is where you create your shorts, um, your cameras. So this was, these were two from last night. Um, and I just real quick wanna, wanna work through this and then we'll go ahead and call it a day. Um, but so uh, you can, one thing I did wanna show you before we end. Uh, so that board aspect, right? We talked about a board. Um, so this is a new feature that they have. So if you are say, um, trying to work out a problem uh, on Flipgrid and you wanna send it out to your kids because you don't have to, when you create a short, you don't have to tie it to a topic, right? Like you guys just did. You can just send the video out to your kids and it's like a screen recording and you get 10 minutes, all right? But the cool thing about this is you can do the whiteboard and you can, at the bottom here, it allows you to split your screen so you can bring yourself in. So say that I was gonna do a math problem. I could take the drawing tool and I could say, as I'm recording, okay guys, you need to remember that when you have a, um, when you have a graph like this or a triangle like this, and we're looking for this angle, but you're only given X and this number, like, how do we find the value of X? Well, here's how you do it. We know that a right angle equals 90 and this angle is 30. So that leaves you with how many, somebody unmute for me, how many, what is 90 plus 30? 60. 90 plus 30? Well, 90. 90, 90, 90 but it's 120. Oh, it's yeah, so then you would have 60. Good job. Thank you, Daniel. 60 is the He's answer. He was jumping Answering ahead. He was jumping ahead. Um, and so then you could to totally work through that and you could be recording this whole thing. Or you could say, um, you know, I saw a lot of kids on last night's homework struggled with the quadratic equation. And here is the thing. And you can like either, um, you could either write it out or you can type it out. So uh, X something equals or Y equals, right? And then the math, cause I'm not a math teacher and you can work it out with them. And so you have that option to split your board so that you can have a whiteboard, but also your face can be shown or you could play peekaboo. Um, and you can have a blackboard and it can go all the way away or it could be all the way there. Um, emojis, one last thing is you can search by like class. They have stickers. Is this the wrong area? Maybe, just didn't work. Did I do it wrong? I like the frames too. All right, you get the point. So that's that's the shorts camera. Um, and then grid pals this is like where you connect with people so i'm going to let you guys play with that but you can put your grades and subject and these are all dots of grid people that use flipgrid that would want to connect with you uh so like nicole burke in yuba city is a history teacher in middle school if you wanted to connect with her middle your students with her middle school students you guys can make contact um and you could reach out to her by just sending an invite so that is all I have for you today. Uh, I'm super excited for the possibilities and I hope that you guys are too. I'd encourage you to watch those videos and, that we linked in the slide deck 
for more information. Um, but before we leave, the last little thing that I'm curious about, um, really quick, we're gonna do a quick little whip around. I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to think about it. Uh, what is one way you could see yourself using Flipgrid in your classroom? So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to think and then one by one, I will call your names and you guys can give me a response. All right, so remember fingers ready to push your space bar. Here we go. Bob, start us off. Where do you see, how do you see yourself using Flipgrid in your class? Well, mostly connecting with kids, but I think the, the last thing you showed with the um, split screen and the whiteboard, I thought that was kind of cool. So uh, I might even start there. Awesome, great. Luce, what about you? Finger, space bar. Um, having kids record their responses or their videos and share. Absolutely. I like can't even begin to think about like how much better my life would have been in my Spanish classes in high school had I had that opportunity to express it and get feedback from my teacher before I had to just do it in front of the class, you know, for the first time. That's scary. So that's awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Jeff, what about you? Sharing uh, their projects and designs. They can video and show their drawings and explain what the benefits of their designs are or how they can sell that. it. Absolutely, I love that. That's great. Like a whole little can't like commercial pitch. That's great. Alyssa? Um, I'd probably do uh, have the kids do like recordings of a historical figure. So they pick one of their choice depending on what unit we're going through. Um, lately we've been talking a lot about like underrepresented historical figures that are not mentioned a lot and then they do like a brief like one minute and 30 second, two minute bio about them and then we watch them, so. Yeah, I love that. I think that's great. And then you can make that into a playlist and then that can be something that you can share out, you know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Or mix, mix tape. And then um, even go to a sec step further, offer extra credit for them maybe dressing up. Um, Calvin, what about you? Where do you see, how do you see Flipgrid being used in your classroom? Either yearbook or, or Spanish? My space bar is not unmuting me. Um, well, for Spanish, I mean, it's pretty obvious any kind of prompt where they're going to need to talk and respond to something, it can either be I'm giving something that they would then orally re reply to or one of them says something and one of them replies to it and that, that can be something that's real closed-ended where, where I have a specific response I'm looking for or open-ended as far as describing something or um, coming up with an idea or whatever. Um, that's great. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Kelly, what about you? Um, so I think just one way, um, kind of in lieu, not in lieu of, but in conjunction with written discussion, because, you know, discussion boards could get a little um, tedious, not tedious, but just repetitive. So allowing them to speak their reactions, speak their, you know, how they're reacting to stories or questions, that kind of thing, and respond to each other that way. Um, I was, after hearing Alyssa's idea, I was thinking it could be also fun during like rhetorical devices doing or like our speech unit having them do like PSAs and um, yeah. you know doing it that way versus written or something. So. I love that. I think that's genius right kind of changes that and kind of meets them where they're at and uh, breaks up the monotony of writing all the time in an English class. Yeah for sure. Mika what about you and health? Uh, well we do PSAs and we study like media messages so I was going to do something like that like what is your message saying or um they had to create a wrap remember that miley cyrus um like the knee bone and the ankle bone like have them do a yeah. wrap about um the different uh bones or muscle groups i love that thank you daniel what about you uh, same thing like calvin and luz uh sometimes the biggest problem that we have is kids practicing their spanish so if i could get them to record you know and i can listen to them and they can see themselves talking it's going to make a huge difference yeah, I know for sure. Absolutely. Ross? 
Um, so I think like, you know, team building and then like content wise, I was thinking like the like current events with the little oh. news thing. Um, I love that. I don't know if it would work, but like probably wouldn't work for like Socratic seminars. But I was thinking like we do like some speed dating activities with like, you know, you're this historical figure or something like that. And I think maybe like a speed dating thing would work. Yeah, then, uh, that's awesome. I love that too. Yeah, I think speed dating is definitely going to be one that we can use that 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 model of that activity. And last but not least, uh, Melissa Adalian. Um, I thought of commercials, uh, doing a commercial for a book um, to try and get other kids to read um, something besides things that I assign would be nice. Um, I am curious though, for the kids who are reluctant to be on camera and they say every video I'm ugly and all that sort of thing, does anybody have any tips on how to encourage them to overcome? that part of it. Mel, you will you answer that one? <laughs> no, you already know this. Like, because you saw how Shannon demonstrated with like emojis and stuff, you can basically put an emoji over your entire face or you can use one of the filters. The filters like have like those weird block filters where you look like Lego blocks instead. Oh, that's if awesome. Voice. Yeah, they can do that. Because it's like, I know that a lot of kids are more shy and teenage. And <laughs> We're losing you. You're all garbly. Um, since she's frozen, uh, she sent me a funny video where she put a blackboard on and she used emojis to tell a story, which is pretty great too. So you see them doing voiceovers, but it's like a whole storytelling uh, using emojis and stuff. So. Um, all right, that is all I have. Like I said, this won't be the last time you'll probably hear me talk about Flipgrid. Uh, I hope that it was beneficial and I hope that somehow you can start thinking about how you can integrate in this into your classroom. I wanna reiterate, you know, uh, the fact that you're here right now trying to figure this stuff out shows that you are interested and eager uh, to try to figure out this new normal and I applaud that uh, because I think I'm in the exact same boat. Uh, I talked last um, session about this idea of crawling uh, and then walking and then running and then flying uh, little by little is what you have to do. We have to try things and yes, they're going to fail. But if we choose to fail forward, um, I think that will be will come out on the other side with a greater understanding of how to navigate a, a virtual classroom. So uh, one way that I am planning on using this in my classroom uh, is uh, I'm potentially going to use it for an attendance tracker. Uh, just to check in with the kids in a uh, like non-threatening way. They can send me a quick little flip grade at the beginning of class, letting me know they were there that day, or I'm going to use it for a CFU or ticket out the door at the end of my synchronous lesson. Like what's something you took away from class today? They can do a quick little flip grade and then I have that saved and I can follow up later on. Uh, so, and then like Mel pointed out, uh, SEL, so social emotional learning check-ins, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, all right, that's all I have. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me via email. I'm happy to answer them. And I'm very grateful to, for you all for joining us throughout the week. I hope that it was a beneficial week and you guys learned something and uh, we're gonna do this ready or not, right? So I'll see you guys soon. Thanks, Shannon.